Hey guys, welcome back to another Alviso. I'm here by myself today, no teammates, and um, of course my friend of me, Brian, isn't able to make it out today either. Um, for those of you who don't know, he went down pretty hard at uh, the San Rafael Twilight Criterium. Um, and a quick update on him, he's, he's back at home now, that's good, but it's a pretty long path towards recovery. So for everybody who uh, donated money to the GoFundMe, um, you guys are awesome. I was like beyond impressed with how many people donated and showed their support in a time of need. So um, thanks for making this community so special and uh, let's get into this video. All right, so the first thing you might be wondering is, as a field sprinter, why would I even want to uh, join a breakaway, attack off the front, something like that? Um, and the obvious answer is uh, it's much easier to win a sprint from a smaller group, from a breakaway group, than it is from, from a field. So that's number one. And, uh, and number two, if I'm attacking off the front, that means um, I am much less worried about all these other riders who might be uh, trying to escape from me and forcing me to chase. So I'm always looking for opportunities to, to sneak away. And um, I guess that's the first, the first good point here is, is, you know, when are those moments when it's best to sneak away? Because if it's, you know, strung out single file already really fast, that's probably not a good time to sneak away. So this moment right here when it's single file, not really looking to break away right now. But you can see in a second here, so there's a rider off the front, somebody's chasing, and then everyone's coasting. See this moment right here, everyone's coasting. This is always a good moment to, to try to get away because you know when it when it bunches up like this that it's slow on the front, whoever was taking a hard pull has stopped. So that was a good opportunity. I didn't necessarily attack there, but I just moved across all of the riders for a very small expense and energy. And now I'm just going to uh, sit in the draft here for a minute and, um, and I peek back for a moment and I realize there are still some, some gaps opening up behind me. And when I'm towards the front and there's gaps opened up behind me, this is another good opportunity to um, to make him pay for it. Because if I attack right here like I do, I don't have to do an, an enormous effort to get a gap because that, that work has already been done for me. There's already people letting gaps open up behind me. So I just put my head down here and it's, it's good timing too on the course um, because this is a tailwind. Put my head down. I'm doing um, a hard effort for sure, but it's um, but it's a very measured effort. Like I'm not going to bury myself so deep that I'm not going to be able to respond to like a counterattack should it go. The idea is um, knowing your limits and and going right up until that limit. So um, I'm going to put in a hard effort here because I want this to work. I know there's a gap open behind me, and um, I also um, I'm thinking about slotting back in and uh, rotating, doing another effort after this one. So. Uh, Zach's on my wheel. I know Zach is a um, strong breakaway rider. Incidentally, he's also a strong sprinter, so um, I'll have to worry about that later. But for the time being, I'm not worried about his sprint. I'm not worried about um, anything except working to make this breakaway successful. And um, as I swing off, I take a peek here. Okay, so there's a, there's a ton of damage. There's some fragmented riders who um, are letting uh, gaps open up behind. And uh, Zach... He's a, he's a seasoned breakaway rider. He just gets to the front and does the same thing. So this is looking really good because um, I see a lot of people make the mistake of, of investing the effort of getting into a breakaway and then immediately sitting on and thinking that that's going to work. And it's okay to, to sit on and just suck wheels and not contribute to the break. And that's a mistake because for a breakaway to work, nine times out of 10, everybody in the breakaway has to be contributing to the effort. And if you're concerned of like getting out sprinted, or something like that, or outclimbed by somebody who's in the break. That's a legit concern, like for sure. Uh, but you have to deal with that later. Like if you're establishing a breakaway, you just have to, everyone just has to be working and rotating through. And you can see that's what happens here. So that's what makes this breakaway successful. But despite our best efforts, we're eventually brought back. And I was actually kind of surprised by this because the three of us were working so well and, and um, I was going pretty deep to uh, try to make that breakaway work, which tells me that there was a pretty good uh, chase effort behind and I know that most people who um, were contributing to the chase are very tired at this point so so even though we're just caught um, I'm gonna sit in for a little bit rest close gaps like this one that's opening up but um, do my best to uh, to rest for a little bit and look for another chance to get away because uh, it's been really fast so far we still have 10 K's to go and I know that um, there's good li likelihood that another breakaway is gonna be possible just because of all the tired legs out there and just like before, I'm looking for a chance to get away that's going to require minimal amount of effort while still get, getting separation. The, the whole idea is, you know, I don't want to do like a thousand watt surge if I don't have to. I want to get separation off the front um, and, uh, and keep a consistent effort. Because I've been beating this drum for a while, guys. You probably heard me say this before, but 
consistency is efficiency. So you can see it's fast right now, doing a pretty hard effort. There's um, at least a couple of guys off the front. Hard to tell from here. There's there's some attacks flying off the front right here, but it seems like people are, are willing to chase it back. So it's single file. Now would not be a good time for me to break away. Um, but it's starting to, um, starting to slow down through this corner. I make a couple of spots up through this corner. Still single file, and you're going to see in a second here, everyone just kind of sits up and starts coasting. And that is uh, always a fantastic there see that is always a fantastic time to either move up or to attack so do a bit of an effort here i do i know i just said i didn't want to do a thousand watts but i just did a thousand watts but but look at the speed differential i was able to carry because of that slowdown um that guaranteed me a gap and um and that separation is what it's all about that's how you uh, you make a breakaway successful and uh looks like zach i draw out zach again and um again just putting my head down right here doing a uh doing a measured effort, doing something that's sustainable. I guess that's the right word. When you're getting a, a gap, it almost always requires you to do an effort that is unsustainable, some, you know, really anaerobic sprint-like effort. But once you have the gap, like right here, just dial it in to, uh, to threshold. Dial it into something that you know you're going to be able to carry to the line, and that's what happens. And uh, fortunately, I bring out strong riders with me, and uh, they do the same. We just kind of fall into line. And this is the, the breakaway of three, by the way, Jerome again, the same three guys who were in the first break. So, uh, so there you have it. This is the break of three that's going to make it to the end. Let's, uh, let's take a look at the last lap and um, go through some winning strategies from a last lap breakaway of three. All right, so here we are on the last lap. And uh, we still have a pretty healthy gap, but um, it is not enough to start playing games just yet. And we're still all just rotating really well together. So this is great news for me because uh, I just want this to remain consistent and m my ideal situation would be we get to 200 meters to go with just a smoother rotation like this. But I know that's that's probably uh, pretty unlikely just because I know that somebody's going to try to uh, to try to break away and have it not come down to a, sp a sprint among amongst us three. But we have to keep it fast because we uh, we don't want to get caught from behind. All three of us have that same uh, goal in, in mind, which is not get caught from behind. So so you can see the first skip pull happened right there, but um, but I'm still okay with this. I'm not uh, I'm not gonna overreact here and try to attack. I just wanna keep it fast to make sure that we stay away and um, I am going to continue setting a tempo where I am confident I can still win from a field sprint, um, but still confident that we're gonna stay away for a, um, a sprint out of this group of three. And I was thinking about going to the gutter right there on the right because of the left to right wind, but I wanted to keep playing nice and continue uh, forcing these two guys to work. And and you can see the games have started now. There's some nice cat and mouse. Uh, <laughs> Zach's letting the wheel go, and this is just fun now. Um, kind of see how he's going to play it. So he sprints across. He tries to take me off the back. Um, it's a good move. He checks right here. He makes sure that that um, he's not going to be pulling me across with too hard of an effort. But uh, that hurt both of us pretty much equally. equally. Meanwhile. Jerome is off the front just kind of chugging away and um, and uh, ensuring that, that we're staying away from the chasing group. And you can't really tell from the rear camera, but they are back there probably five seconds back, and it is all just desperation attacks, small groups off the front of the chase, and um, Jerome's just picking it up here. So this is great news for me. Third wheel is exactly where I want to be. I don't have to worry about anybody come slingshotting past me from behind. Um, I'm keeping tabs on the gap we have behind, and um, I want to stay on Zach's wheel. Zach's the Zach's the major threat here, only because uh, Jerome had to close down two pretty big gaps to get across to the, each of these breakaways, and now we have a fourth. So this is Ben. Ben's come across, and um, and I would usually um, be on the lookout for Ben in the sprint, but um, he, I think he just blew his wad coming across to this group. So I'm not too over, too overly concerned about Ben in this situation, but. Uh, but this catches me by surprise. So Zach goes super early right here in the tailwind, and um, and I just immediately have to go. I hesitated for like a millisecond there, but but I really just have to jump and make sure I'm on his wheel. And I am kind of struggling here. I sit down, I shift a couple of gears, but I'm letting this gap open up just a little bit. Um, hard for me to close it down, and finally I do. And at this point right here, I'm spun out in my 11, and it is going fast. And I know that as long as I'm in his draft, I can just take a rest for a second, take a breather, and then stand up with about 100 meters to go, and... Uh, and just push across with the last bit of energy that I have left uh, for the win. So it's a sneaky attack by Zach to go super early like that. And if I was not paying attention, it definitely would have gone the distance. But um, but that's why Zach is a guy you definitely pay attention to. Thanks for watching, guys, and uh, see you at the next one.